Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to another Fallout Hobbies live stream. Today I'm going to be doing some fun and garish slaneshi stenciling on this uh, night that I'm working on. It's going to be a little abrasive to the eyes, but that's okay. It's supposed to be. It's slanesh. As always, Jules is here. Hey guys, what's up? Just finishing up gathering a couple colors that I need for this project. All right. And I need a blue color. Here we go. Steel blue. That's a good color. All right. So this was the same um, night that I was working on last week. And I uh, decided to keep going with it, and I probably will for another video after this one until I finish it out. It's the same one that has lights in the eyes and lights under the shoulder pads. But uh, what I'm going to be doing today is not lighting involved, it's going to be painting involved. So I'm going to be using flame patterns and infantry reptile scales to get like a really garish pattern on these shoulder pads. And then I'm going to be um, doing an interesting thing with the flame stencil that you'll see in a little bit. But first things first, I got to get the first colors down. Also, I'm going to be doing this, even though it's Slanesh, I'm still going to try to make it look a bit like a knight, like a regal knight. So I'm going to be doing a uh, split pattern on. I guess this one. So I'm taking off, I've pre-primed it black, and then I used um, a uh, Vallejo, uh, not a Vallejo, it was Army Painter purple color to kind of lay down the base color here. I'm using some tape to split the panels. Trust me, this is going to look really cool when it's done. It's going to be really... I can probably use this as a display model if we ever start doing conventions again. You know, if COVID stops and we can get back to Nova Open. Yeah, wasn't Nova Open supposed to start today? No, yesterday. I was going to say. Yeah, Nova Open officially would have started yesterday, so that's a little sad. But that's okay. We've got a surprise for you guys tomorrow. So it'll be in our newsletter. I'm going to break out, get the airbrush fired up, break out some reptile scales. Get this airbrush looped up. So how's everyone doing this Thursday? Good Thursday so far? Yay, nay. I think it's an awesome Thursday so far. I think it's an awesome Thursday too. Warlord purple is looking good. I have been a fan of Slanesh since I was a kid. And when I say a kid, I mean like my late teens, early 20s when I first started getting into Warhammer. I even have a Slanesh tattoo on my wrist. That's how hardcore I was about it. <laughs> Mike Donahoe on our Facebook page said, awake so far. He's awake. Awake, yes. That's a good, good start. Good start. Coffee. I 
have a lot of random stencils just kind of hanging around my workbench. These were ones that I used from a video uh, probably about two months ago, and uh, they're just kind of still hanging around my workbench. So, yes, for anyone that asks, the stencils are very reusable. dry for a moment. Ah! See if that's stuck to the paper here. That's cool. That's exactly what I wanted. Yes, I know it's purple reptile. That's weird, but that's cool. That's what I wanted. Um, Mike is asking, and I already know the answer to this one. Um, they they work reasonably well. If you don't have an airbrush, it's not absolutely necessary. It's more about like the painting technique that you would use. You want to elaborate on that, babe? Is he asking about stencils without an airbrush? Yeah. Yeah, you can you can use the stencils without an airbrush. It, uh, I mean, with an airbrush, you'll obviously be able to get some more fades and, you know, some radiance and stuff like that with the coloring. But if you were to use a paintbrush, you'd use something fat and flat like this, and you can just kind of, like, punch the paint onto it, you know, just like, like that, like, stipple it on. And that effect actually works better than an airbrush on some things like um, tank insignia. Like if you were putting like squad markings on the top of a rhino door or something like that. Or if you were doing caution stripes on the side of a building or like chevrons on a road or something for its rain piece. The paintbrush method actually works better than the airbrush method for those. But yeah, you're, you're not dependent on having an airbrush. It's just a different style. You get different effects with it. You can also use these with spray paint cans too. I, you just got to make sure to mask everything really well because a spray paint can will pump out a lot more paint than an airbrush will. So you need more distance. From you the need model. a little bit more distance and make sure everything's properly taped off because of the overspray because you don't have as much control. John Paul on our Facebook page says he's off work early today at home, spending time with his son awesome. and uh, their foster, but thinking about the one ball he needs to assemble and the other two that he needs to paint. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, I did my family time and my homeschooling this morning. We, we've just started homeschooling because of COVID, so right now, uh, we're covering um, The Adventures of Alice in Wonderland, the classic version, of course. And um, we kicked off the school year with Victorian England and uh, the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. So that was my morning. And John Paul is also uh, replying to Mike and says that you could get away with using a sponge to apply the paint lightly. Yeah, you just got to, the, the biggest thing is if you're using a lot of paint, you got to make sure that the stencil has good adhesion, otherwise you're going to get paint under the stencil. Isn't it like Green Stuff World that even makes that tool that's like, um, a little spongy bit that's on the bottom of yeah like a wand but you can use that yourself that's even like yeah. the same foam that they put in packaging for like oh, yeah. metal yeah. figures and stuff like that if anyone even uses metal figures anymore uh -huh. this, this is old school. in fact that is a really cool tool 
And I think I'm going to just post a link to it. So did anyone hear about the atrocity with AK Interactive's new book? Did I tell you about that yet? No, I vaguely heard you talking to Simon when you were having your mandate with him last night, but I was uh, listening to music and running postage on orders, so I really wasn't paying attention. So AK Interactive released a new book with all these like diorama tips and tricks but like the the every diorama that's in the book is like extremely controversial like on purpose it's like dioramas of like gas chambers from concentration camps and like dioramas of like you know people shooting up heroin in the middle of a plaza in Spain and stuff but the thing that i mean their their what they claimed their purpose was was it was a uh, supposed to, you know, be that this is art and, you know, you can talk about it or whatever, but some of the content of it seemed a little bit beyond that into the realm of unsavory and racist and questionable. Ah. And uh, the other thing is the video that they used to promote it mm -hmm. was just like all these like shots of like Jewish people in concentration camps and like dead bodies and stuff like that. So it seemed a little bit like uh, glorifying it and oh. not and not necessarily denouncing it. So they've been in some hot water for a few days because of that. Uh, D Osborne Art Studio is saying, "Hey, you folks." Hey, what's up, Dan? So, yeah, Simon and I were talking about that heavily last night because, you know, don't want to restrict art. But the question is, like, who spends, like, hours looking at photos of gas chambers just to do, like, weathering on, like, a shower head in, like, a gas chamber diorama? It's just a little questionable there, you know? Yeah, Dan is saying, yeah, yeah, man, that video was wretched. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't see it, so I don't. I don't think yeah, I, it was definitely. I, I know they were trying to be provocative and stuff, but it's like the content that they used was not savory. Yeah, I think that would be like a little intense for me. Yeah, I, I don't think I want to go there. Well, one of my well, one of my best friends is from Auschwitz. Um, and he, uh, he grew up in Auschwitz before he moved to the U.S. And, you know, his, I mean, the whole history of his town is tainted with that stigma. Right. So, you know, for him, it's a little bit more... Close to home. Close, literally close to home, because, you know, it is his home. So, a little questionable there. We've been poking and prodding, and hopefully Simon will be creating stuff for the store, too, and we would love to have him on a live stream. He's going to be creating some video content. We're, we're twisting his arm. Oh, he's going to be creating some video content, some more tutorials and stuff like that, too. Very cool. All right, so the, so the first panels are down, and... Uh, I want to do the other half of the panels in like a dark blue and then I'm going to start breaking out some flame stencils shortly. So let me find a good, like the steel blue is really nice. Dan says, yeah, pushing miniature dioramas to social commentary is fantastic, but you got to have some tact in how you approach it. Yeah. Videos of genocide and glorifying the suffering as part of an advertisement is absolutely not the way. Yeah. No, that is not tactful. <laughs> Yeah, I'd have to attempt to agree with you there. That's oof. not so. Yeah, that's the that's the current uh, the current outrage of the of the week in the hobby community. And then speaking of advertisements today, uh, which I kind of agree with this one, um, Zuckerberg just announced. Um, 
that he's going to be banning political ads in the week leading up to elections. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I think that's really smart and an awesome move on his part. So. Um, Facebook's been a little bit too passive with some of this stuff lately, so at least they're doing something. Yeah, Dan is asking, um, says, working on a new night, is it going to be Chaos and Slanesh? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, Dan's actually working on a charity night right now. I know, you were telling me. That's so cool. Yeah, and uh, we're donating some parts for it that i got to get on the printer this week as soon as I clear out a couple more orders. I also want to do, um, I have to post some pictures, unboxing, I'm not good at unboxing videos, but I am going to do a shout out for Frontline Games. Uh, they sent us these really cool um, gaming mats, and we're also going to be doing a hobby box um, promotion with them, so that's pretty exciting too. And we donated um, a whole a bunch of hex mesh stencils. Yeah. <laughs> And some LED lighting, and I think their entire subscriber fan base is going to get some sort of code, if I recall correctly. That sounds about right. Yeah, Frontline Gaming's the shit. We just got a couple of their game mats in, and uh, they're awesome. They're nice quality stuff. Initially, when I started sh doing weekly streams um, about eight, nine months ago, I was working on a terrain board that was a like a lava planet and uh, I was doing a lot of stencil work on those I'm probably gonna actually pick that up again for some more videos in the near future because oh, there's yeah. still a lot more pieces that I need to finish up for that but that frontline game mat that I got perfect is for perfect that. for it because it's a it's a lava planet mat yeah so yeah, that, Dan says good. he heard those mats are really great. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're good quality. They're heavy, too. Mm -hmm. I was actually surprised because I've seen a lot of um, a lot of 4x6 mats that are kind of, like, flimsy. These, these ones are solid. They're thick. So, they got my boat. Yeah, I'm actually going to pull out the lava one today and try and stretch it out and take some more pictures. And I'll, I'll post them to Facebook and our Instagram feed and stuff like later today, maybe tomorrow. I have a lot of paperwork to do today since, you know, we got married like the end of July. So I finally got around to changing my last name to Gamble on my driver's license and social security card. So I have to go and like change it everywhere else oh. yeah <laughs> all right I'm, I'm waiting for this glue to dry before i apply another pattern here's the thing i'm thinking i was originally going to leave the blue section just kind of plain but now i kind of want to add a pattern to it mike says he has two of their uh gaming mats and they rock they do let me look in the inventory and see what pattern I One of the great things about owning a stencil store is that I literally just have hundreds of stencils everywhere all the time. So I uh, broke out the snakeskin stencil. Maybe I'll use the smaller one that's on here. The infantry? No, no, no. The snakeskin stencil has... I was going to say, you don't have an infantry in that one. Yeah, because it's got two different sizes, uh -huh. and it's already... Complex as hell as is, so I don't think I could really cut it any smaller. Just prepping this. 
happens up here. Yeah, I'm definitely going to use the smaller one, I think. Just give me a minute to get this stencil prepped. That's all right, the blue is drying anyway. Maybe I'll use the larger one on the big pads and the smaller one on the small pads. Is there a pair of scissors floating around? Um, what did you do with the ones oh, you were right using here. last night? No, they're right here. Ha. If you want to get use out of your stencils, don't cut them down. But I cut them down if I'm doing it for a specific project. So I've got purple reptile skin on one side, and I'm going to have blue snake skin on the other side. Okay, I'm going to check your math sheet after our live stream, okay? Go start on your book report, please. Okay? Thank you. Cut some of these small ones down here. Okay, Dan says he has to duck out and check on the minions. Yes. They're doing their morning distance learning. I hear you there. That's what Jules was just doing a moment ago. <laughs> and then uh, he says, have fun. Looking forward to seeing more work on the night. And Mike says, oh, by the way, my LED kits are due in today. So excited. I'll post up pics if I can run the wires without destroying the mini. Yeah, we'd love to see it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm always like looking for more um, customer pics and stuff to like share on social media too, so it's always a good thing. Generally, if you like um, use the hashtag Fallout Hobbies, I tend to, you know, look for stuff there. Share it to our streams. Mm -hmm. This looks like a snake molted. <laughs> Some of the smaller ones down. Very garish. It's going to be very garish. It's going to look like hair metal a little bit. Okay. Is this dry enough to? Just do two rounds of this so I don't have to cut up any more stencils for this project. Alright, I need a brighter blue. This is good. Temple Guard blue, it's pretty bright. And where's my thinner?
That would help if I had the compressor on, right? I was like, why is there no pressure coming out of here? Can I hit the on button, baby? Duh. Let's get out the Ethermatic Blue, and I'll use a little bit more of this Steel Blue to do like a fade on it. And I know I have another blue contrast color somewhere, let me see if I can tip. Oh yeah, Pterodon Turquoise, that's a great color. I like using the contrast colors to help kind of blend in the stencil work. Pterodon turquoise. I love the paint names. Oh, I know. Warlock purple. Warlock purple is like my favorite color ever. Pterodon turquoise. It's great. <laughs> Sean Paul says on our Facebook page, some of uh, Game Workshop paint names can be pretty confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I always, I remember when we were painting the house next door like two years ago when I like first moved in, I, I like was shopping at Lowe's in like the paint department. Sometimes like, you know, I'm attracted to paints just based on their name. 
you know, or not attracted to it. Like I can't paint a room that's named Sea Biscuit. <laughs> I just can't. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you have against horses? <laughs> Nothing, as you well know. <laughs> what do you have against horses, man? contrast to get onto the purple armor areas real quick. It looks totally pink on the video. That's fine. Yeah, this I know the video blows out the contrast a little bit. Yeah. For context, it actually is more of like a purple color in person, but the video is not showing that very well. You know, it's the same thing with, like, lighting kits. Like, every time I do a lighting kit thing, it's just so blown out on the video. let everything dry for a few minutes before I go to the next step, which is going to be adding some flames to this to really just make it obnoxious. stencils here. These are the flames, flames one, which I've used in this one because it has uh, some longer strips. I still have to let the contrast color dry a little bit more, but these are the stencils I'm going to be doing because now I'm going to be adding a flame pattern to the bottom of these that's going to be in various colors as well. So let me pre-prep some colors while I'm thinking about this. I think I want to go really obnoxious. it is. Now, since I'm doing light colors on top of dark colors, I'm going to need to uh, spray a little bit of white underneath. Of, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be attaching the flame stencil and then taping everything off and leaving an area exposed that I'll be spraying. Now, 
the flames are going to be much brighter than the armor color. So I'm going to be spraying a little bit of white first. So it kind of, shows up. So it shows up and then spraying the color over top of that. But there's still some wet spots around here that I'm just waiting for that to dry up. In the meantime, I guess I'll just start working on these legs a little bit since I can't really do much until this dries up. Spray a little gunmetal on these legs. Get this out of the way so I don't accidentally over spray any gunmetal onto the armor panels. <laughs> John Paul says on our Facebook page, despite their creativity, it aggravates me to no end that I have to search for colors named Bug and Glow or X-Ray Flame with no connotation to Flush Tone and Green. Right. <laughs> yeah. You kind of want them to just be like, you know, Flush Tone 1, flesh, like Dark Flush Tone, Light Flush Tone. Plus, when you're writing out the formulas, you just kind of sound like an asshole. <laughs> you do, you know? <laughs> I'm going to use some hex ray blue mixed with some Magos purple. I'm like, <laughs> it's like, just say dark blue, light purple. It's a lot easier. See, I don't know. I, I kind of, I don't know. I like, I like the funny names. I do. But yeah, it would be helpful if they had like more context and they made a little bit more sense, you know? If you're gonna name something creative, at least it, it should make sense. Not everyone's gonna know what a buggin' is. <laughs> Troll Slayer. Like, okay. That, to me, sounds, it could go either way. It could be like a purple or a murky like brown. Exactly, that's the problem. <laughs> I'm literally just spraying this gunmetal because I'm killing time until the other panels dry, so. This is nothing, nothing amazing going on here. Just spraying some gunmetal. Nothing to see here. <laughs> this is a Vallejo paint, and it's amazingly called exactly what it is: gunmetal. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like lead belcher iron. You know, whatever the hell their new gunmetal color is. I stopped keeping track of all the Games Workshop paint colors years ago because I've been playing 40k since 3rd edition and the paint color names have changed three times since 3rd edition, so it's kind of like pointless to dedicate any more brain space to that. There would be no brain space for me for something like that because I have a very short attention span when it comes to like names of things and actor names or anything like that like I drive you a little bit crazy but on the flip side when we get to be really old you can repeat and tell me the same story like at least 10 times oh I already do <laughs> really? Yeah, I already repeat the same stories because every time I tell it, it's like you don't remember from the last time I said it. So <laughs> I, I just always sound way more interesting than I am. <laughs> hey, whatever works. 
In my defense, I've never had a good memory. It might have something to do with the frial region of my brain having an internal bleed when I was younger. So my, my memory's like for crap. With some things. With other things, it's spot on. Mike Donahoe says, preach on, I can't keep them straight anymore. I've also been posting the links to the different products you're using, the gunmetal paint and the snakeskin and uh, this the is flame flame swan. swan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a pretty wild looking pattern when it's done. I made sure that's really on there. Hey, another uh, amazing Vallejo name, White. It's literally just called White. <laughs> they didn't go creative and say like... No, Games Workshop is the one that goes creative. Vallejo is the one that's got practical names. I know, that's what I'm saying. They, they, they didn't go creative with that. They, they can, like... Yeah. It's actually called White. Comes. Why not just say pasty? Well, because pasty could be like Sam. Have a little bit of that. What? Oh, I blew out there real quick. Sorry, a little bit of spinning there. Okay. Or like Crypt Keeper White. Like, you know. Oh, you see, now you're getting into Games Workshop territory. You don't like walk out in the sun enough, so you just like, you know, you're pale and yeah, and that's something. Babe, what I'm saying is Vallejo names their paints what they actually are. I know. I don't like it. I like the creative. No. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. This paint is just spitting everywhere. All right, let me see if I can fix this real quick for the other side. I'm not trying to have like a blowout. And if you guys uh, were not aware, we did um, just start doing this last week. You now have a couple of um, shipping options with us. You can upgrade if you like live in a real rural area uh, domestically or an apartment complex. And you can upgrade to UPS. And uh, if you're in a country that's having shipping issues right now, um, you can also upgrade to DHL, so that's a thing. And we also just opened up the store to uh, group ordering, which is kind of cool because we realized that, you know, a lot of people can't exactly visit and hang out in hobby shops right now. So you could actually jump on our website if you're part of a gaming club and, you know, chat about different things on our site and start a group order and save on shipping. Just wanted to throw that out there in case y'all missed it. The group ordering thing is pretty cool, I think. Because we oftentimes get orders in that's from like a club and then what ends up happening is someone's like, oh, they backed out of this order or whatever can you delete these like three items or whatever now it's all on the yeah everybody can pay their own tab but it all ships together to one locale and y'all can figure it out when it gets there yep. but also if you're in a country that does have bad shipping issues right now you can do a group order and upgrade to like DHL or something like that which is pretty good so you can do bigger orders and then kind of split the shipping amongst a couple people and if it's a really larger order like I think I have it set where if it's 200 or better it's just we ship just it free it anyway, yeah. yeah curious to see how this green is going to look right needs a drop of thinner. Just 
Tom Paul says he agrees with Julie. Balance between artistic license and practicality. You paint names and just in life. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very practical. I'm so practical. Should we tell them about Monday? Our Monday and your experiment on my head? Well, since it's COVID and stuff, I haven't actually been to a hairdresser to get a haircut since um, probably January because I got busy with other stuff and then COVID happened. And um, Ron actually cut my hair because um, I was looking like Rapunzel, just trimmed it for me on Monday and actually broke out the hair dye and dyed my hair. Yeah, I'm actually a pretty decent hairdresser, in case anyone is curious about that. Wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah which I is good. very good. I cut Jules' hair. I cut our, uh, well, Jules' daughter, my stepdaughter. I cut her hair. I've cut my son's hair a bunch of times, and he's got really long hair, too. Yeah, it's very, very practical. I'm not going anywhere. This green is so bright. This is going to be like... Try not to... I need one more layer on this side. Yeah, Julia was cracking up yesterday when I told her that. She's like, he cut your hair? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, well, how did that go? I'm like, really good. He used to be a little goth kid in high school, and he cut all of his friend's hair, only, you know, dyeing them weird colors and mohawks. Hey, Adam. Go All right, now I need a blue. I'm waiting for the green to dry, and then I'm going to do a bright blue blue on the other side and then I'm going to peel it and you're going to see some crazy stuff is what you're going to see. It's going to be garish. You know what, I could, I probably don't even need to tape this. If I just airbrush it delicately, I can get in there without taping. this sit for a minute and I'm going to hit the blue with one more coat. You know what, while I'm letting that dry before I peel it, I wanted to paint this.
You know, if I had thought in advance, I would have just put that piece on later, but I wasn't thinking. Because in a different video, I was showing how to build the spider legs kits. So I have to do this masking job, which I wouldn't have to do if I just built it as a sub-assembly. But that's okay. No harm, no foul. Where's that blue that I just had? That's okay, we don't mind watching you tape things. I love taping things. I'm serious. I love this blue. I painted a Gundam with this blue color before. I just love this color, steel blue, Vallejo steel blue. It's nice. And I'm gonna fade it out to purple. I think I'm going to take that purple one notch higher, but let me clean the brush out. I really like that color. Heavy Violet. That's that color's name. Warlord purple, right on the edge, my favorite color. I think um, that's a nice gradient. That's the color I'm actually going to use once I get done with the areas that are black on these Sisters of Crucible. I'm going to use Warlord purple for highlights. Totally, it's a great color. I used to have a Slanesh army back in the day. A lot of people back in the day used to paint noise marines, kind of like more like a Pepto Bismol pink. But I always wanted it to be wanted it to have more magenta. In it. So I always went with Warlord purple instead of pink. Look at that. Yeah, I think for like the little tiny roses and like uh, the bodices, I'm going. To, I'm going to do purple for that. Nice. Be pretty. Yeah, that's a nice gradient right there. I think I want to paint during our game night tonight. Do it. Do it.
Well, this video is going to be coming to a close soon. I just want to, uh, these look like they have dried. Oh, man. That is garish. Hold on, a piece of this pencil got stuck. There we go. Oh, wow, that's bright. Look at that Slaneshi action happening right nice. there. Look at that neon green flame and blue flame on the other side. I mean, there's still a lot of like, there's tight details that I need to clean up, but the bulk of that is done. I need to, uh, you know, paint the armor trim, which is probably going to be gold. And then add some shadowing, <sighs> add a couple highlights here and there. But I mean, the majority of the stenciling is done. I really like that green on that blue. Pretty happy with that. Well, anyway, so I think that's where I'm going to stop the video right now. Let me uh, be sure to check in on our page or if you're on our newsletter tomorrow because uh, we do have a announcement and a surprise for you guys. So uh, watch out for that. Hold on. Before we end the video, I just want to pop off the uh, paint masks that I had on some of the LEDs here. I want to show these LEDs off one more time. I need that battery though. The queen cell battery go. Because this thing's going to look creepy with this uh, female face. There we go. She's going to look so wild when she's done. Mm -hmm. She's going to be all garish, spider-legged. There's going to be boob armor. Awesome. Nice. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am probably going to be working on her a little bit more next week. Um, maybe even finishing her up next week. And, uh, or at least getting her, like, really close to finished before I do any, uh, any, like, final detail. I still need to paint the flames on the armor panel for the legs, but that's going to be, I don't need to do that right now. But there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed it so far. So next week, probably a little bit more, and then she'll be done soon. All right, thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next Thursday at 1 o'clock.